I said, let me tell you something. There's people like my dad who you can give them a million dollars, a billion dollars, and every day here they're gonna wake up miserable, vindictive. Doesn't matter what circumstance they're in, they're a miserable f And that's why I gave my dad the gun, and it was more of like putting a dog down. You know, and I told that, that my buddy, and I'm like, listen, I don't think you're that f***ing guy. You're a good guy, you're a happy guy. I see around here you have a good personality. I don't think you're my dad. But if you are my dad, I'm gonna be the first mother hey, aim for the head. Obviously his goal was to win a belt and become the champion, but now it's actually materialized and it's in front of him and he's holding that belt and he's staring down the barrel of a really hard hitting and a very underestimated challenger in Drickus. And then also like, everything else stacked on his shoulders, you wonder whether or not this is going to just burn out really, really quickly, and whether or not the everything outside of this fight is going to stack up and he's not going to be able to, to hold on. The comparison to someone like Ronda Rousey as well, who is like on top of the world. And I honestly think this is what is happening with Sean at the moment on a lesser scale. People are absolutely fascinated by this guy that has sort of emerged from this darkness and achieve probably one of the most amazing accomplishments, which is becoming a world champion in and amongst all of that pain and hardship as well. Now that is stacking on him. Now that you do have Drickus and the and the, the slew of Drickus fans that come with him as well. And then you do have that fight that they have in the crowd. It's like, you do wonder whether or not you will see a sort of come January, a same sort of uh, explosion that we saw with Rousey as well. And, and if that does happen, how is he going to handle that? But of course as well with Strickland, he has lost before. Yeah, so Rousey was like invincible, yeah, right? Exactly. And Rousey was like a product of her upbringing from her mum, uh, incredibly competitive, first American to win a judo medal, I think. Who's just trained you from birth. You can never lose. Like, don't let anyone, uh, no one has the right to beat you, I think, is how she was literally raised. So when you finally lose, on a massive stage and everything and compiled upon it like there's all those stories where she would cry all the time on the mats whenever someone beat her just because she wants to win so bad because she's trained into it so with, with rousey you could kind of see it there is that element too though of him uh being this type of person that says oh no no, no. i purposely don't go anywhere mm -hmm. on the way home because something bad is going to happen because i don't like people don't want to be around people and have these crazy urges to you know be violent randomly and you know, without reason, really. I mean, I wanted to fucking kill someone so bad as a kid. I'd walk around with a fucking knife, just hoping I'd fucking, just like, fuck, I still want to kill somebody. It just would make me feel good, you know? I just fucking just, oh, I fucking love it. And then now you have him in this championship scenario where he has to do a press conference. That was the reason why he was there. He was probably asked and heavily encouraged to be at that event. And so now he has to be in front of all those people, around the people, honestly, that he says he hates. He just hates being around people in general, feels he's better off in training at home to keep him sane. And so here he is in these very, very public scenarios with a spotlight on him, which I'm sure he doesn't necessarily like either. So if he's not fighting and he doesn't have goals, then he's not keeping himself in check. But now that he is a big time fighter, he has the other side of that where he has to be around people, all kinds of people all day long. So that, that would be one of the key differences, right? With somebody like Ronda, he has lost, but he's never had this kind of attention. And now that he's got this kind of attention, something he actively avoids in his life. Now we're starting to see some of the repercussions of being faced with that every day. And that's the thing, like, I think that brawl that they had at 296 was really, in my opinion, probably out of character for sean when he's at work yeah do you know what i mean like he might have these violent encounters outside of the cage when he's walking about his you know general life but actually when he's in the ufc or when he's at ufc events generally speaking he's been quite jovial oh man i made the champion man with his fucking frosted tips and his gay little watch oh no <laughs> He does go in after people. He went in after Adesanya. He's gone after Drickus and Sean O'Malley and, and all sorts. But generally, he does it with a smile on his face. This is the first time that you've actually seen that sort of jovial smile, that, you know, that sort of boyish banter disappear. And it's actually led to blows 
Yeah, like in, in his stare dance, he's always smiling at yeah. the other guy and stuff like that, you know. He's also in a situation where people are now sort of demanding that behavior from him because they're entertained. Like, you say, put a spotlight on it. But it's like Nina, Nina uh, Drama, I don't know her full name. Her videos with him do so well. There is there is a reason why people gravitate to him because they know they're going to get an unfiltered, unadulterated nugget from his brain that is going to probably cause some sort of outrage somewhere in the world. And you want that at this point as well as a champion how far that goes until you have something like this on twitter where he's gone on these kind of rants having watched the sport for so long this is a pretty unique scenario for a sitting champion to just i mean suddenly yeah just talk about something I mean, I think like john, john jones has gone through it as well he john's always john's at like uh, like and... john doesn't like us anyway does he so because he's a, <laughs> he he's, a he's a denier in a way you know he he'll deny how serious something is a little yeah. bit yeah i think at times he's obviously accepted that we're i think he shun... also came from a really stable background right. and things like yeah. that i think generally growing up yeah he was in a really loving households with i mean his dad was a preacher his brothers are all athletes and they come and support all of his fights like he came from a really tight-knit background, so I think he can compartmentalize those moments. So, yeah, he might cry at a press conference or something like that for failing a PED, but I think he can go back to that support system where I'm not really sure Sean Strickland has much else. Where like was that. Sean's girlfriend? Why wasn't she next to him? He probably doesn't want her in the public eye. Yeah. True. Very He's true. made everyone else a target, so someone else is naturally going to do it to yeah. him. He's going out there saying all kinds of shit he shouldn't say at press conferences and things like that. And the one thing I will give some credit to Drickus, and I don't support Drickus saying it, but in his post-fight interview on ESPN, after that brawl post-fight interview, he was like, well, yeah, Sean Strickland wants to go after everybody's details, wants to go after every little thing about them. And then we turn that back around on him, knowing he was sensitive about something, and all of a sudden he is losing his mind and attacking people in the middle of events. It, it, it is a bit of that dish it and can't take it type kind of thing but on on the same token it's like i do think sean strickland is consistent though he has things that would piss him off about anybody so when people start talking about his dad and his relationship and things like that and people making fun of his abuse it's really consistent for him to get pissed off like that i think that's who he is and who he's built his character on that kind of anger growing up and i needed fucking so that's why i was also white white supremacist and no one even interjected in my life. Me being 12 years old, walking around doing the fucking Hell Hitler salute with a fucking swastika on my arm. At no point did anybody say like, hey, maybe we should help this fucking kid. There probably is a bit of psychological unraveling of undiagnosed issues that have just been pushed off to the side for decades, you know, for a very, very long time since he was a kid. But then you also have people in the public jabbing at those specific pain points like, that's insane that people and so many people were doing it at the exact same time on the dais. Like that is fucking crazy. Basically, to sum up, in his first tweet, he says that the walls broke and he's blaming things on allergies. You don't really know what he's talking about. The second tweet, he says it was bad. That little bitch cry. I'm assuming he's talking about himself and literally referring to himself as a bitch. You know, the one where you prep talk yourself the whole time in your head. Quote, stop it, pussy, unquote. Another quote. What the fuck is wrong with you, man up, laughing my ass off? Is a pretty big unraveling yeah, I mean, in real time. And here's the thing, like, there's fucking nothing wrong with doing that. There's not, but it, the, the problem lies in the way that he's reacting to him crying as well. It's like, it's almost like he's been told his entire life, even into his adulthood, that it's just like, as a man, you cannot cry. And it's just incredibly outdated outlook. It is, it's awkward as well because it's just like what Sean has done on the build up to the championship and, and to this point is cr kind of establish his brand on the fact that he is a man's man. He is a red, white and blue American man. And now obviously you're starting to see the crack show and you wonder how many people are going to completely flip on this and be like, look, you took the piss out of Roundtree for crying and you... And now, and now here we are. I guess it's just the irony. At now we're at that point. Be interesting to see what the community's actual response is. Well, there are definitely two sides of the community. There are the types that really see against this. But you know, you remember when it happened with Darren Till, and he was talking about how he didn't want to fight Kelvin Gastelum. You got a lot of people on board, so there are definitely both sides of that community. I, I don't know. 
The idea that a guy can't be vulnerable, I mean, how many people have we seen champions cry? GSP cried when he won the belt. Anderson Silva cried when he won the belt. The idea that like a basic human function needs to be written off because I don't know, you think you're in fucking war and showing weakness is bad any time, any second, any day of the year. Like what the fuck is that about? It honestly could go two ways. It's like either him kind of accepting this and going, do you know what? No, actually I've been lying to myself. I've been lying to everyone out there. This is the pain and hardships that I face on a daily basis. And here I am in my most vulnerable form. If he's accepting of that, does that anger inside the cage dissipate? You know, can you perform physically if you are that tortured? He's used all that anger and hate in everything he does. He marches fucking forward. One, two, one, two, one. That's his whole game plan. It's a furious attack, isn't it? And you do wonder whether or not, like, he needs to have that to, to fight, to, to be a champion. And if that starts to get dissected as well is is he going to have that a level of ability to want to overcome those demons if he's literally doing that in right the cage he's saying well. he could like change his, his ability to fight and perform. well i don't know i don't know i'm all i'm happen, Confi confidence is huge happen, right? like rory mcdonald and he was like he got really yeah. into his religion and then he was like i don't want to hurt people anymore or something yeah. i don't know like your own self-belief is a massive part of yeah. this massive part of it and if he feels in any way whatsoever diminished as like the fucking guy, like yeah. the man. And he knows he's about to stand across the cage from somebody who's not gonna quit. It's very much putting yourself, it's like holding up a mirror and it's showing yourself right there in that moment. I hope this is not an unraveling we're seeing. I hope it's an evolution, a growth that we're seeing and that, yeah, he's going through some shit in real time and that he recovers from it. I think he has a really good chance against something like Dricus Duplessis. And I don't think that's the case that we're trying to make here because just one episode or one, even just a, a few episodes, they might be in tight succession like what we've had in the last week and what's happening today with this whole thing. Hopefully the guy's just making some strides in life and maturing a bit, Well, he's, honestly. Well, he's had the most incredible year. You know, he lost against Pereira in such a devastating way, but he bounced back in in one of the most spectacular ways ever and became a champion, beat one of the most dominant middleweight champions ever. That, more than anything, should establish who that man is and what he's all about more than anything that happens on a podcast or anything that he does out of a it, during a moment because everyone has moments just because what you're watching is so unreal doesn't make it unreal that's the crazy thing about fighting is you're watching people do superhuman things so it's hard to understand at the end of the day they are human and they are real people well that was pretty intense wasn't it actually and what's not intense is a nice little membership to I was gonna MMA on point, eh? Yeah, if you if you enjoyed this podcast, guys, you want to see the full unedited discussion, it is available to all our members who click the button and join our membership program down below. Become one of the family. You can be a Just Bleed member, a Hall of Famer, a channel champion. Uh, depending. Completely out of order, but... <laughs> yeah. It don't matter. I respect them all equally. So there you go.